Alright, let's continue down the road. And where is Callum again? He's... Yeah, he is responding, but for now, we just have to follow the road, I guess. Not too difficult. To the next thrill ride. Here it is. It's the Tunnel of Tales, not the Tales of Terror. Why was that in my head? I'm not sure. Uh, so here's the map again. So we've, yeah, we've gone w west. Yeah. Park is not too big though. It's like a, not a big theme park. Come on, mommy. You're on a boat Callum, already? Stay where you are. Where is he? Where? Are Callum, you here? Stay where you are. Is he going into that boat? Swan boat? Is he reading a fairy tale? Hans and Gretel? Uh, yeah, let's go inside it. Where is... Did Callum go inside his boat? Callum, tell mommy where you are. Yeah, let's go ride the swan. Can we... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool. We're in for a treat. Epic swan ride. So is this going to be uh, scary or just wondrous? Tunnel of tales. Yeah, it should be interesting. Like like fairy tales, right? I guess we just have to endure this and look around. <laughs> nope. Near a great forest. There lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife, I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. Um, I said the next morning the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Chat. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. 
Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. And then what happened? Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. I already know what happens next. Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Alan, where did you go? Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, the opening is here, and she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove, and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. So that's it. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. <laughs> this is not how the fairy tale goes. Only the ending is different. I don't know if you you knew the story already. Well, what the point was... Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Creepy. Why is there blood on your snout? And where's my boy? So I guess this is the, uh, the end of this uh, truly epic thrill ride. In which we learned the story of Hansel and Gretel. I already knew the story. But we didn't find Callum. Callum, where did you go? No reply. I guess we follow the trail. What trail? The breadcrumbs? Is that the clue? So there was a point in this story. Man, it would be boring, right, if you had to <laughs> go in, inside this thrill ride in real life. I mean, it's definitely for children. Um, Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest, the birds, the old witch, even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. 
We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. So she has some good memories of that story. Uh, but for now we need to follow the trail, I guess this these things are the trail. Breadcrumbs. Where are you? So now we're going north. Where was north again? I guess we'll find another map on our way. I think the Ferris wheel was up north. That's the only thing I remember. Is this a cave? No, it is not. And there's another a park car. Oh. Another accident. This place. Accident? Is this an accident? Park maintenance. Oh, we can open the door. Oh, really? A teddy bear? Can we... A knife in its eye? Let's read the note. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I did choose what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process Henderson himself chose to use negative. And that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon, I will know if this has all been for nothing. So did the park even open? What happened to the bear? Did Archie Henderson do this? Let's go on. Let's go running again. So yeah, it really plays like the vanishing of Edith Carter. With clues along the way. The vibe reminds me a bit of Silent Hill. Although that game is even creepier. What, who did that? Where was that? There's a Ferris wheel. Look how big it is. Another thrill ride over there. Looks like more fun than the swan ride. Does this have a, uh, an official name? Oh, it's an Octotron with the octopus. Yeah. Um, so I guess there's nothing over there. There's nothing over there. So we need to go this way. Are you in there? This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It used to make me dizzy. Okay, let's examine the report. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. What happened? Eyewitness report Atlantic Island Park incident from the Kingsmith Sheriff Department. Officer on duty, Sheriff F. Bannerman. Witness name, Norma Creed. Statement. We were waiting for our turn on, on the ride. Frank, me and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice. And at first we thought he was making some animals. Animal, like a tiger or lion, but as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face, smiling out of that block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy. But one of teenagers on the ground and he was stab stab stabbing with the ice pack and blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. The last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids has landed on the ice sculpture making the horrible creature look more or less alive. That sounds very awful. Um, no I definitely don't want to meet these, this chipmunk 
dude. Can we ride this thing? It looks kind of boring as well. <laughs> can we uh, can we go in? No, you can't jump. Uh, yes, I want to ride the Arcadron. Let's check this before. Increase speed, decrease speed. Yeah, let's make it go faster. It's fun. There we go. Can we even go more fast? Yeah, this is fast enough. Okay, let's let's go ride this ride. I can't get on while it's moving. Oh, we need to shut it down. Who's turning it on again? Then. Let's decrease the speed over here. I guess it's down now. Do we power it up? Or I can't get on while it's moving. Yeah, it's standing still right now. Okay. So I guess this game is about <laughs> going into thrill rides, like it's roller coaster tycoon, but then creepy. Where's Callum? Who turned the, uh, the thrill ride on? I have a feeling she's going to puke. Oh man, what is that? Creepy, creepy. Not too scary though. We can handle it for now. Okay, let's get out. This was boring as well. Oh, well, there's this dude controlling the uh, the machine. Oh my. Can we go talk to him? Is he still there? No, he's gone. Uh, so I guess now we can go two ways. We can go this Callum! way. Where did you go? I guess the breadcrumbs go over that way, and we can go this way over here. Is there a map? No, there ain't a map over here. Oh, they. This is a dead end. Uh, there's a page. Let's read it. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete, I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money, but no matter how much money talks, it can conjure up missing plans from thin air. But I've tried con contacting the organization who sold me these plans, and they are stonewalling me. Every contact that I had, every meeting place that I have had watched are swept bare. I have thinking I have a sinking feeling that I've been swindled. We've gone ahead with what we could find in the plants regardless. The harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. I'll probably probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day we open the park. There will be rides after all. Okay. I'm not sure what to make of these notes yet. For now, let's just move on. Uh, to the next area of the park. Where are you? So, oh, there's another message. Examine Polaroid. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> she looks a little bit, bit scary. Lorraine, you look a bit... I don't know. Um, me and Callum. There's a guy behind her. This is the creepy guy who controlled this thing over here. I guess we have to f meet him later on. Callum! Can we use these things? No. Which way? This way? Okay, let's. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled red balling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations and the world that I had built for Callum is no different. 
He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. They shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought.